This is DMG and we're making a dungeon door. Another one? Pas de. So, Terminator 2 Judgment Day, uh, no, uh, Advanced Dungeon Door Part 2. Alright, so we're going to grab our door we made in the last video, video 105. And onto some baking paper, which parching, parchment paper, it might be called in America, I think. Um, we call it baking paper. Basically, it's the thing you shove in the oven that you put your chips on so that you don't burn things. That, that, that baking paper stuff. Go around it with a Sharpie and mark where the hinge bits are and I'm just grabbing some dice as some references to what we're actually going to be doing. So we're going to be creating some cubes and building them up around the edges um, in this manner and then with the door the hinges will go in between there and essentially we will build it up all the way around as an arch. So this is the sort of size we want to get. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to measure around this D6 um, and uh, we'll just have that as a reference so that it's much easier to determine whether we've got the right sizes or not. So then we're going to grab this channel's favorite material, tin foil, aluminum foil, aluminum foil, depending on where in the world you, it could be God's gift to humankind. So. Uh, you've seen this before in the previous arch video. We're basically going to start taking strips, rolling them into balls. But this time we're going to check if these balls fit into that square. Yes, it does. So then we're going to just continue on and make a whole bunch of balls. Alum aluminum, aluminum balls. Okay, once we've got those, I'm now going to use Sculpey. All right, so this is oven bake clay, so it, it hardens in the oven at certain temperatures. You can also use normal modeling clay, uh, which is air drying, uh, or anything really that you can find that's cheap. Um, this is just, you know, sort of aside from what I normally do in terms of using home materials, but we'll go into DMG's lab and see if we can do anything else later on that you can use instead of this. So then we're gonna get a small ball that would fit inside that square, and flatten it out and then stick an aluminium piece inside there and uh, then uh, flatten each side into a cube and start to build up around the edges of the arch that we have traced. Obviously you want to stay on the outside of the arch and just continue on. So the idea here with the tin foil is you're just not using as much clay so it um, keeps the you know keeps your clay supply plentiful. Then we're going to grab a straw, we're going to measure up the side and uh, cut that piece of straw out and then we're going to create some cubes without using uh, the tin foil. So we're just going to um, pile a few of those together. Obviously it will depend on how big you're doing yourself as to how many you're going to do. And then what I'm going to do is take the straw and push it into there. I'm going to also grab a matchstick here, put it through the straw. Sorry, not a matchstick, a toothpick and then push down on that so that it goes deeper into the, um, the faux bricks that I'm creating here out of the out of the clay and then just push everything back together and uh, once we've got all that we'll just start massaging those bricks up the side and uh, cleaning it up a bit and then reshape the bricks with a plastic I'm just using a plastic knife as a tool um, just redoing the grooves in the various spots and once that's done we can then uh, slowly peel away the clay ever so slightly until we've got the ability to pull the drinking straw out of the clay then you're just going to basically massage everything so that it's nice and neat and uh, continue on with the process. So then while it's there in, in there we're going to um, put some matchsticks into that groove um, just to keep the shape there. Uh, if you're going to use the oven bake clay um, you can leave it in there. Uh, obviously if you're using the air dryer it's not going to make any difference whatsoever. You could probably leave the drinking straw in there. But uh, I've put the matchsticks in there to kind of hold its shape and we're starting to create the grooves where the um, 
the hinges are going to be. So the base piece that you grab, you're just going to push the um, matchstick into that base piece and uh, so create a little hole for the um, matchstick to go into and then we're just going to again tidy up with uh, the, um, the plastic knife and we're going to cut away where the top hinge is going to be so we now have um, the base piece, the hinge piece and then the top piece so this is the hinge piece here so you can see the groove inside that um, and I'll see how that's going to be sealed once we've actually hardened the clay. So before we do that, this is a used sponge that I've been painting with for quite a while, so it's gone hard, and I'm just pushing that into the clay to give it a stone texture. So a nice way of just giving it a stone texture that has the stones going out as opposed to in. So then just slide it onto a tray, shove it in the oven at the temperatures that are normally required. So now it's hardened either by clay or by oven, and we're going to cut an appropriately length toothpick, test that it's correct, and test that the um, hinge piece will fit on there. This is now hardened, and um, now we are going to um, apply the base piece, so it's going to stick on there. So we grab some hot glue, blob in the hole, stick the, the toothpick into that hole, uh, clear off any wisps, then thread it through the hinges, and uh, once that's ready to go, we're going to put the uh, hinge uh, th th three piece, the hinge piece there, and we're going to apply some hot glue across that. Okay, and you're going to want to hold it there until it cures. And if there's any excess glue, just quickly clear it off with um, a toothpick or something so that it doesn't stick to the door. Right, and then the top piece, apply the glue into the groove that exists there. Just applying the hot glue and then grab the door and just shove it on into that hole. There it is, nice and easy. Okay, so you wanna hold that in place and you can see that the door is still working perfectly fine on the hinges. So then you're gonna have these gaps where the hinges are, so we're just gonna use hot glue to fill in those gaps to pretend to be smaller stones. And you're gonna do that on both sides um, of the archway and each time test the door to make sure the door is actually working the hinges are working so that you haven't seized them up and then go around the arch and just fill in anything that's a little bit too wide a gap so you've got a functioning door okay so we need to put the door onto something so i'm just going to grab a piece of cardstock and a bit of hot glue on the bottom of each of the archway ends and stick it down on the cardstock and then cut it out uh, into an appropriate shape. So always testing to make sure the door will open and all that sort of thing. So I'm cutting out a, just an oval shape and it stands nice and easy on any flat surface. So now obviously we want to black bomb it. So we don't want to black bomb the door because we've already painted it. So we're going to use our marvelous uh, material and you can basically use whatever you like. Plastic might work well. This was just handy. So I'm just going to wrap it in the tin foil and um, cut off any excess with a pair of scissors and then use some masking tape to just seal off any ends and once that is done we're going to just go into a well ventilated area see video three on how to do that and black bomb the hell out of it it's covered in black i cannot believe it how much is that if you're into dnd and you're into computer games, you need to check out Neverwinter, especially the new expansion, The Maze Engine. So go to playneverwinter.com forward slash the DMG and check it out. It's free to play, excellent game. So after that brief interlude, it is now black bombed and we're going to peel it open like some sort of bizarre metallic fruit and uh, oh, a nice door inside. Okay, so peel away all the tin foil plastic or whatever you've used obviously you want to check that the door is still working and then we go on to painting so of course you don't want to hit the door so just uh, using sponge black white making a little bit of gray and sponge it on to get a nice tone, tone stone texture a lovely stone texture and that's it nice and easy so that's how we make the arch around the dungeon door so in the next episode we're going to do a little bit of an experiment with something i like to call dungeon blocks, but we'll see that in the next video. 
For now, like button to like this video if you like it. You can also subscribe so you can see future videos when they come out and raise this channel up out of the depths of obscurity. You can also check out my Facebook page, Twitter account, Google Plus page, my email newsletter available on my website, thedmg.info. We will also find a store where I sell things like Under the Tavern, which is an adventure. If you don't know about the adventure, check out my channel page and under the playlist you'll find Delving the Dark, which is a walkthrough of this dungeon. There's 90 areas in the dungeon. It's uh, very cool. Very, very cool. Anyway, I will see you in the next video.